While most attention surrounding Houston's role in getting Americans to the moon and back in the 1960s tends to center on the Apollo program, the one that preceded it also sometimes tends to get short shrift. I'm talking about Gemini, or Gemini, depending on who you talk with. And since our next guest has just written a book with that title in which chronicles the program in question, we'll ask him. Jeffrey Kluger is the editor-at-large of Time Magazine and the author of Gemini, Stepping Stone to the Moon, The Untold Story. Jeffrey, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Is it Gemini or Gemini? Let's get this out of the way. Well, that's, as you say, it depends on who you talk to. Um, When the program was just established um, in 1962, there wasn't a big um, astrology community in the U.S., Um, So the word Gemini was new to a lot of people, and they did not know how to pronounce it. Um, NASA, within the walls of NASA, uh, the long E pronunciation became adopted, Gemini, as opposed to Gemini. Um, And uh, that actually came up in the media a lot. Um, Reporters were always asking how to pronounce it. So NASA decided to actually issue a press release and stated that their names and nomenclature committee which by the way did not exist um <laughs> had approved the uh the pronunciation gemini so within the walls of nasa it was gemini everywhere else it was gemini reporters like walter cronkite adopted the nasa pronunciation because that was sort of the shibboleth that showed you belonged so i use the pronunciation Gemini when I'm talking about astrology and Gemini when I'm talking about the space program. Okay, that works for me. Uh, And the Walter Cronkite part sealed it for me, too. Uh, (laughs) 16 astronauts flew on 10 Gemini missions. What were some of the things that they accomplished? Well, they accomplished basically all of the hard uh, uh, maneuverability and navigational skills uh, that were needed to survive in Gemini, in uh, Apollo. Um, When Mercury flew, uh, the astronauts were more or less passengers um, riding aboard a spacecraft uh, over which they had little control. Um, Gemini, Gemini was a very nimble craft that was highly maneuverable, um, and that allowed for a lot of exercises and skills to be practiced. It was in Gemini that we learned how to rendezvous and dock with another spacecraft, um, which is a skill that would be essential when we were going to the moon, since uh, the lunar module had to dock with the dock and undock with the mothership, the orbiter that brought them home. Um, We learned uh, long duration missions um, during uh, Mercury. The longest mission was 22 orbits or 33 hours, um, but a trip to the moon could take two weeks. So uh, we practiced long duration missions. And uh, critically and most dramatically, uh, we practiced spacewalking, um, which would be a skill that would be needed Uh, When we landed on the moon, uh, astronauts had to know how to ingress and egress their vehicles. So all of these skills that made astronauts pilots more than passengers were perfected during Gemini. Uh, While they were testing out long duration in space, uh, the truth is these 10 missions took place in a very short period of time, just 20 months. Was that fast pace Maybe one of the reasons that it tends to be less appreciated today than the Apollo program? Well, that's a real possibility. The Apollo program ran for four years from 1968 to 1972, and in some respects went on even longer than that because in 1975, we had the joint Apollo-Soyuz mission with the Soviet Union, and in 1973 and 74, um, Apollo uh, Apollo spacecraft were used to get to and from Skylab. So in some respects, the Apollo program lasted seven years. Gemini, as you say, was just 20 months. Um, and I think that sort of eye blink uh, lifespan um, may indeed have been a part of the reason that Gemini uh, didn't get as much attention as Mercury and Apollo. The other reason... Um, was uh, the drama factor. Um, In Mercury, we were launching astronauts into space for the first time. It's where we got Al Shepard and John Glenn. Um, It's when we were in our closest foot race with the Soviets. Um, And Apollo, of course, went to the moon. So there was natural public appeal there. Um, Gemini was, you know, it was more of a technical 
uh, an engineering program than the other two were. What was Houston's role in these missions? Uh, Houston uh, was, uh, as I say in the book, um, NASA was a lot of things. Uh, it was, you know, a an institution. It was an agency. Um, it was, you know, closely tied to the military. Um, but it was also one of the biggest, juiciest pieces of uh, congressional pork that Washington had ever cooked up. And there were a lot of uh, cities competing for the uh to be home to the space center and houston was selected um in large part because lyndon johnson was vice president at the point at, at that point and johnson of course was a texan so 1620 acres of land near clear lake uh, were made available and mission control got built in houston i think a lot of folks are aware of the deadly fire on the launch pad that took the lives of three astronauts at the start of the Apollo missions. Were there any close calls during the Gemini missions? <clears throat> there were, well, there were a couple of deaths. Charlie Bassett and Elliot C., who were supposed to fly Gemini 9, um, died in a plane crash at the McDonnell Aviation Factory, <clears throat> which is where the um, the Mercury and Gemini spacecraft were built. Um, but there was one there were a couple of near death experiences um, on Gemini five, Gemini eight uh, in 1966. Uh, Neil Armstrong and Dave Scott were in orbit around the Earth, um, having docked with an Agena target vehicle um, when their spacecraft began to spin out of control. It was uh, it got up to about 60 revolutions um, per minute or one revolution every second, um, which tipped the astronauts into near vertigo, um, something that they would not have recovered from uh, if uh, Neil Armstrong hadn't been pilot enough to undock his spacecraft from the Agena um, and uh, damp out the rates and stabilize the spacecraft again. Gemini 9 saw um, Gene Cernan almost die in a um, in a spacewalk uh, when he became overheated, his visor became fogged, um, and there he encountered a sharp shard of metal at the aft end of the spacecraft that could have uh, torn his suit, uh, torn his suit open um, before the mission took off. Deke Slayton, who was the head of the astronaut office, um, instructed Tom Stafford, who was the commander of the mission, um, that if uh, Cernan became marooned, um, Stafford was not uh, was instructed not to st stay in space and perish along with his co-pilot. Um, he was instead to cut him loose, um, and something that almost happened. I think conventional wisdom suggests that when Apollo 11 landed on the moon, that that was when America won the space race with the Soviet Union. But you argue in the book, no, that's not the case, that the Gemini missions, that's when the space race was won. How come? That's right. Um, uh, we became a much more adept spacefaring company, uh, country than, um, than the Soviet Union was at the time. They beat us into space. They had the first... Uh, satellite in orbit, they had the first man in orbit, they had the first two vehicle uh, orbit, um, they had the first multi, uh, multi person crew. But during the 20 months Gemini was flying, um, the Soviets launched nothing at all. Uh, they were working on building their Soyuz rocket and their later N1 moon rocket, um, and neither one was terribly successful at that point. Um, meantime, uh, Gemini was the Gemini missions <clears throat> were popping off once every ten weeks, um, accomplishing spacewalking, accomplishing rendezvous and docking, accomplishing long duration missions, um, and that opened up a wide lead uh, over the Soviets that. Uh, that Moscow was never able to make up again. So what do you see ultimately as the legacy of the Gemini missions? I think the Gemini missions will be seen as uh, the time, the program in which NASA and the country as a whole um, became spacefaring people. Um, until that point, um, the launches of the Mercury, uh, the, the six Mercury astronauts who flew, um, they were dramatic, they were history-making, 
but in terms of technical achievement, um, there was a stunt like quality to them, not to diminish them, but there was, uh, you know, there was more of uh, just proving that we could get into space. Um, I think the Gemini program will come to be seen as the program in which we became as a nation true space travelers. Jeffrey Kluger is the author of the new book, Gemini, Stepping Stone to the Moon, The Untold Story. Jeffrey, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.